And he says to them, to know, O Israel, that the Lord thy God is one God, and that you have to worship him with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. And he says, I give you a second commandment like it, that you have to love your brother as yourself. <coughs> Everybody familiar with that? Anybody ever heard it? Something like this? I got pretty close. Now, this statement again matches exactly the Old Testament because the, it's not a new commandment that Jesus gave them about loving their brother because that's also in the books of Moses. The same thing about loving your brother. The Jews take that, by the way, to mean only somebody of Jewish blood falls in that category. That's why it's forbidden, by the way, for them to deal in interest with each other. With each other. But it's not forbidden for them to deal in interest with non-Jews. Muslims are forbidden to deal in interest, period, regardless. There isn't any kind of an exclusion there that you can sneak around the corner. Just so that you can make a comparison so that you can see and sum it up now, Jesus to us as Muslims is the fulfillment of the scripture. He is miracle birth. He had no father. He was a prophet and a messenger, which there is a distinction to us. He had a book. He is with God. He was raised up by God. He's with God now. And he will come back, just as he left, alive, at the same age that he was when he left. And he will lead the true believers to victory over disbelief and over evil in this world. This is the belief of the Muslim. It's mentioned in the Quran, except for the last part which I mentioned about his return. This is implied by one of the statements in the Quran, but it doesn't say it in clear text. Where we have the clear text is from the prophecies of Muhammad, peace be upon him, stating unequivocally that Jesus will return. Many of his teachings he talked about it. He even mentioned where he would come back in Syria, where he would land, and what was going to happen on that particular day, and some of the other events that would be taking place at that time. Historical events that some have already just recently taken place. So for the Muslims, we're looking for Jesus at any moment, any moment. Some of the Christians also have an idea that that's real close. So this explains why the Muslim Student Association here felt that this was a very appropriate topic for us to bring up and share with our Christian brothers and sisters so that you can know that we're feeling some of the same things you're feeling, sensing some of the same things that you're sensing, and we're all looking in the same direction. It's interesting to note that the Jews also are expecting their Messiah at just about the same time, some similar sign. Although they're going to reject the fact that he's already been here, they still are looking for him to come and bail everybody out of the problems that we have now. So this gives you a little bit of background, and I think certainly opens up now the floor to some good discussion. So I hope that you have time now to fill out the paper. I see they've been circulating that around. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and start filling those out. And while you do that, I'll bring this part to a conclusion. Conclusion being that for someone who is really searching for the message of Jesus and then looks to Islam, they can find a lot of evidence, strong evidence, to confirm a lot of what's in the Bible. In fact, what I found myself after spending two years of putting the Bible on one side and the Quran on the other, I found eventually that there was no contradiction anymore in the Bible between the Bible and the Quran as long as the Bible didn't contradict itself. I found it to be very totally uh, compatible and in sync with the teachings of Islam and the Quran except in cases where it absolutely contradicted itself. And we said, oh, there's no such thing. No, I'll mention it and then you can straighten me out if I'm off. I'm going to quote to you from a holy book without mentioning the name of it. And some of you will right away recognize this. It says, in, in the translation, the meaning of it, it says that God doesn't have genealogy. God is not a man. And then it says, and God is not the son of man. Anybody know what book I'm talking about? Anybody? God is not a man. God is not the son of man. Anybody know? 
Hello, you know how many Muslims here? Oh, only one Muslim here. <laughs> Two? Three? I'm not many main terrorists. Come on, tonight. I'm even more on What am I talking about? Anybody know what I was talking about? You think I'm talking about Syria Cross, right? Land you did. Well, I'm Yulah, right? Wrong. I wasn't. I was quoting that from the Bible. That's in Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Another translation said that he should sin. Another translation said that he should err. God is not a man that he should sin. And then it says, and God is not the son of man that he should repent. That's what it says. It's a clear statement. Jesus, peace be upon him, said, according to the Bible, that he was the son of man. So that would be a contradiction if you're going to say he's also God, he's denied it. So, now there are some people, by the way, uh, that will tell you, it doesn't matter what the book says, I already know because I've got it in my heart. Well, this is, you can't argue with that kind of reasoning, because if I already have a conclusion in my heart, I don't need any book at all. I use a telephone book. No matter. Because I'm not going to change my mind. But if somebody is open up to look and you know, study, then this, these are things you might want to know about. But now, let's pick on the Muslims for a while. That's enough picking on the Christian world. What do you think? Yeah. Well, the problem with the, the, that I found uh, with the Muslims is that many of the Muslims don't really know much about their religion anymore. They used to. There used to be some great scholars. But today there seems to be more of an emphasis on trying to take the religion and twist it to being what you want it to be. And I found that even when I visited other countries and talked with scholars, that they were more interested in trying to squeeze their religion to get the result they wanted, rather than to see what does it say. What's, you know, the best way to do it, but when somebody was specific first and ignored the general, then what's going to happen is you're going to you're going to wind up twisting things. Am I right or wrong? Somebody with me? And so, for instance, I'll give you a good example. I mentioned about doing an interest or readers. It's called habits. I just remembered I'm on the glad you Hmm. That was not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you need somebody to read them? Who you chat over here? <laughs> Read that one for me. You said that Islam believes Jesus had no father. Does it believe that the father of Jesus was God or no? I just wasn't clear on that point. Okay, this is a good question. In fact, that I said Jesus had no father, does that mean God is his father? Okay. Let me be real quick. He has no father. That means he doesn't have a father. That means there's no father. <laughs> no dad. No pop. No paternal relatives. How are you doing? So he's not the son of God? He's not anybody's son except Mary. Mary is his mother. He's called in the Quran, Isis, which means Jesus. Isis, which means the son of Mariam. Jesus is somewhere. There's no Joseph. We don't even have a Joseph. Can't even kind of look over at Joseph and go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you ever read it? Matthew, first chapter. Anybody ever read it? First chapter. All right. You sure? Test. Ready? What's the first words? Fair, <laughs> it's purpose. And I doubt that anybody's going to tell me, you know what? Who's born? <laughs> This is the genealogy of Jesus the Christ. That's what it says. Genealogy means what? Lineage. Lineage. Yeah, exactly. It goes through what, 28 generations? Track 42. But they say there were 14 generations from it. I'm quoting from the end of it. Right, and then 14 generations. And then 14 from 14, 14, 14, 14. Yeah, I'm all right. 42. <laughs> Count the names, 43. Oops. That's okay. 
<laughs> By the way, go, go over Luke chapter 3 and read the genealogy over there. Because it's something between Jesus and David. Because it's only talking about the David. But it carries it a step further. When you read the one in Luke, it gets really interesting. Because the names don't match. As soon as it says Joseph, the father of Joseph is totally different. And then it goes back with it. And then it comes back together for a while. And it's got the same names. And then it spreads out. And then it comes back together. But when it gets to David, instead of Solomon, it's named in the prophet. Now that's a brother of Solomon. So you're going like, wait a minute, what's going on with you guys? I mean, how can... <laughs> You either came from this guy or you came from his brother. Are you, uh, are you your own grandpa? Or are you the son of your own uncle? Or how does that work? And then from David, the uh, Genesis doesn't do that. Genesis just starts with David goes to Jesus. But here in Luke, they, they go all the way back to Adam. David is the son of, is it uh, Pharaoh? And then back, 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 back like this, all the way. And then it says, Enoch is the son of Seth. And Seth is the son of Adam, and Adam is the son of God. That's what it says. Did Adam have a father? Did he have a mother? Why did he say he's the son of God? It's a phrase, isn't it? It's like a, like, he's the, he's the creation of God. Does that make sense? So, if somebody said we should worship Jesus because he had no father, no, that, that's interesting. Let's bring that as a subject. What about Eve? Did Eve have a father? She came out of Adam, so we should say yes. Did she have a mother? No. No. Wow, I think that's a bigger miracle. I don't know about you, but a man didn't birth. And he is bigger than a woman. <laughs> a man with no woman involved is a bigger deal to me than a woman with no man involved. They're no big deals, but still, I'm not going to worship her. Are you? I don't think so. And then what about Adam? He didn't have a mother or a father, but I'm not going to worship him, are you? No. It's very clear why you wouldn't do why, you know? Huh? It makes sins. You can't worship somebody that makes sins, right? So, that's where Jesus comes in as somebody that can get on Jesus. Would you? Because he's perfect. He didn't make any sins, right? Even in Islam, we don't have any sins that we're attributing to him. And every prophet in this land, we know they made mistakes. We don't say they made like, sins, but they made mistakes. Even Muhammad, these people aren't made mistakes. But we don't attribute any to Jesus. But it's not because we consider him to be alive. It's because we consider him to still be alive. And it would be wrong to divulge information about somebody who's still living, wouldn't it? You know, you wouldn't want people to know what you did, would you? Uh, so that didn't divulge anything. We don't know if he did any sins or didn't do, but God's not going to say, well, he did this, he did that, because then he comes back and then, you know, how's that look? Because one of the things in this land is that God does cover people's sins if they're sincere in their repentance. He doesn't expose people. So that makes it very interesting. We need everything in writing, by the way. So if you can't write, we can help you. No, no, I need it in writing. And the reason, two reasons. One, because as we start that, it gets out of hand. Second reason is it won't get picked up by the cameras anyway. So just write it down. And we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it as good as we can. We did that one. Okay, next one. I don't know if you me, you really gave me a chance to dive into that one. It's an area where I really have been maybe the most uh, time that I've spent in that area because I was writing a book called That Prophet. But then I found some other Muslims who had written better books, so I stopped writing it. But, uh, well, they did, they did a better job than what I was really doing. I don't know, it was going to be too detailed, I had too, many, too much emphasis just on this word, son. That's where I put a lot of emphasis on where that word son was used and where it actually meant in different usage throughout the Bible. Go ahead, read that. What signs or recent events make people believe that Jesus is coming any day now? Mm. I like that one. Did you hear that? They were saying that somebody has 